We're going to build a benefits enrollment and change form using the fluid forms and approval builder and go over what benefits and challenges we run into in the process. Here's the form we're going to build. It has a number of sections, a complete by human resources section, a lot of instructions. We're going to do the best we can to automate this form using the delivered fluid forms and approval builder process. So to begin with, we're going to start with a new home page. And we're going to add through personalized home page some of the tiles that will help us with this process. First, in forms and approval builder, we're going to add a design forms tile. And we'll also add the my forms tile, which will allow us to access those forms after we've built it. We're also going to drill in and add the approvals tile to this home page so we can do everything from the same page. Now we can use the design forms tile to go in and build a new form. We'll create a new form type, life and roll. And in the first step, we'll add some labels. We'll go ahead and pull the label as closely as we can off of the target form. We'll leave the status as in design. You can see that we can also set effective dates that this form's available, that's a good feature. Or we can change the image. And here is our workspace. This is uh, really handy. We can drag and drop widgets from the left. We can set properties on the right and we can see in the center what it all looks like and see that real time. So that's a great feature for the tool. The fields at the top there to be completed by human resources. Those fields, we don't really have a way to conditionally hide those from other approvers other than HR or other participants in the process. And that is a problem. Also, the description field up at the top, we can't get rid of that and it doesn't always do us any good. There are a number of different properties that can be set including length options for the various types of widgets that we add. We're going to add another divider here and start adding the fields that are to be completed by the applicant. We do run into some label length issues along the way here. As you'll see, we sometimes have to use some pretty severe abbreviations in order to make that work. So one of the nice options here is the ability to easily define codes. So if you use the code type of widget, then we can add a value and then various display text. And that's very easy to add. We'll be fast forwarding it a little bit here for uh, when we've already shown you something. Prompts also have some good features. Using a separate setup table, we can set up records to use as prompt tables. Here we want to use the state table, but initially it isn't working because there's no country populated to, for that state table. We can fix that by adding another field and using a prompt record of country on that field. That gives us a country lookup, but in order to use it for the state lookup, we need to set the prompt control on the country field. So we set up the country field as a prompt control by choosing the state record and the country field. That allows that field to govern the uh, other place where that lookup record is used, or where that record is used as a lookup, which is over here on the state table. So now country is filled in, and now we have a list of states underneath that. Adding more fields. Here's an area where it would be really helpful if we could default a value into these fields. Unfortunately, that feature, although it was there in the classic Forms and Approval Builder, is no longer there. So we're going to be relying on the end user to fill that out correctly. That's uh, a small version of an even bigger problem, which we'll talk about here in a second. 
So for the coverage section, there is a lot of instructional text. There is no way to actually put that text on the form except in a separate instructions area that is kind of hard to find. So we're going to have to put all of that into one place. We can use the nice look up here. It would also be nice if you, when you selected that you declined coverage, if the other options would be hidden or would never show up. Uh, unfortunately, there's no conditional logic in here either, so we can't do that. We have to just put all the fields in here. And even though there would be some invalid combinations, such as not enrolling but then choosing spouse or dependent coverage, uh, we can't enforce the, that the text or that the, uh, the data be consistent. And the, the main problem as we're filling this out is that we can't pre-populate this form with data from PeopleSoft. So it's always going to start out blank. And when we update PeopleSoft, we can't do any, we can't update there either. We can only do add transactions when we do the component interface update. Those are fairly significant restrictions. But we do have the ability to test the view of the form in these different form factors, and that is awesome. It's great to be able to see exactly how it's going to lay out, even while we're building the form. Next, we finally get to our instructions page. And here, again, we, it used to be rich text in the uh, classic form builder, but in the fluid forms and approval builder, you can only insert pre-formatted HTML text, and you pretty much have to put everything in one spot here. It's, uh, it'll come up as HTML if you've marked it up, but you can't actually enter it as rich text. The approval list uses user lists from AWE, and it's a simple path, uh, no branching allowed you can either lock it down after approval, after submit, or not at all. Security authorizations, this is a new feature, an expansion from, uh, from the classic, and that is that you can restrict access to these forms by role name. They'll still all show up for any form user, but they won't be able to access the form, so you still can't hide it. Um, also, after you have activated a form, as we're showing here, you can no longer delete that form or that field from the form. You can change its properties and you can add new fields, but you can't delete. So now that we've completed this form, we can add it to our own homepage. In order to add it to someone else's homepage, we'd have to go and use another tool. But we can add it to our own homepage and then we, we can test it out. We could transfer ownership to someone else, but still only one owner can access a form at a time for, for design purposes. So that's another uh, severe restriction. So now I click on that tile and now I can fill out my new form. I have this description field that I can't get rid of. It would be nice if I could default in my group number. I can't do that either. But, uh, but I can collect the information. And then I remember, oh wait, there are probably instructions somewhere. Here are the instructions, and, uh, and then I can remember, oh, this is supposed to be completed by HR. So clean all that out, try again. Again, those instructions are unfortunately hidden in that hamburger menu, and unless someone goes and looks for them, they're not going to, uh, they're not going to see them when they open the form. So it's a bit of a training issue. Again, we do have the nice cascading lookup to be able to, to uh, use two fields to narrow down the valid values of one of those fields. Again, here it would be nice to be able to, uh, to default that value. Also, I can't really format that uh, as a phone number. 
and neither can I hide or unhide fields when I make a selection in another field. That would be helpful. After I fill that out, there's a little bit of a strange page flow here. I can't really add an attachment until I've saved. So if I want to add an attachment, I need to save, then add the attachment. I can uh, preview approval here, but I need to save, add the attachment, and then hit submit. So now if I submit it, now the approval status goes from initial to pending approval. I can then drill in and see where the form is headed. I can also make changes after I've saved it, which is a little bit odd. I could potentially submit it, get an approval, and then come in and make a change after someone else has already approved the form, depending on the settings that I use. I can also reach the form by going into the My Forms area. That lists the forms either by form type or by form status. And I can also go to View Forms History to see old forms by year. Filling out a new form brings up all the form types, including ones I don't have access to. But if I click on one I don't have access to, it will not let me actually enter the form. So now I'm logging in as an approval. I can approver. I can go to the approvals tile, click on forms to narrow the approvals down to my forms approvals, and then I can see my uh, my new form. I can fill out the fields that are HR only, and then I can approve or deny or save. When I approve, I'm prompted to add another comment. Now here's a problem. After I've approved the form, I still haven't actually posted the form. If it's supposed to go and update a PeopleSoft component, I need to actually hit that save and post form up in the air, up, up, up the end. I can add more attachments and such forth, but I still haven't actually done the work of posting it unless I hit that button. If I leave without hitting that button and go back to my list, my approval list, it's off the list, so it's out of mind. I can still get to it, but only by going to an approvals history area here and bringing it back up. There's really no good way to tell. Also, when I do post it, the errors pop right up in front of me as the final approver rather than going to IT. So going to look at the setup pages here, one thing to bear in mind, once you get to forms, the first four here are actually for the classic form builder, which is still there, but is unconnected. You, they share some setup pages, like the defined prompt records. Uh, that's where we set those up, and we can also map form to CI. But remember that there are two different form builders. They're both delivered here, and they're incompatible. You can't migrate from one to the other. So here's where we could set up a CI update and again that is add only we can't actually update any key values there so that's a run through of building an actual form using the fluid forms and approval builder check out our other video to see the same form built in GTE forms 3.1